Welcome back to another episode of Code Club. I'm your host, Pat Schloss. We're going to be talking more about the group by and summarize functions in today's episode. Although we've used these functions previously, we haven't talked about a new argument in summarize that was released this past summer in dplyr version 1.0. That is, the dot groups argument. That is the topic of today's episode. After playing with it more on some other projects, I find it's actually pretty helpful for making the code in my analysis more explicit and readable. Perhaps you'll recall that when we group our data by some categorical variable, like the genome that the sequence came from using group by, we could then use summarize to calculate a summary statistic across the observations for that genome. In the last episode, we used this to calculate the number of copies of the 16S rRNA gene in a genome and the number of unique 16S rRNA gene sequences in each genome. We've been calling those Amplicon sequence variants. Before dplyr version 1.0 was released, the default behavior was to remove the genome level grouping of the data, removing the last grouping variable. Now, Summarize outputs a message telling us what Summarize is actually ungrouping. The change is that Summarize now has a dot group argument that allows you to tell Summarize what grouping variable it should be ungrouping by. One argument is drop last, which gets you the pre-version 1.0 behavior, and it's also the default behavior in 1.0. But it also allows you to use drop, which removes all grouping for those cases where you've grouped by two or more variables. Another option is to use keep, which tells summarize to keep the grouping that was set with the group by. And finally, a fourth option, row-wise, that creates a group for each row in the data frame. For today's episode, we'll look, take a deeper look at why we might use drop last, drop, and keep behaviors. Although the summarized documentation indicates that dot group is an experimental argument, my sense is that it's probably a good thing for making it more clear what's going on in our code because it forces us to be explicit about what we're doing. We'll see how this plays out in today's episode, where we'll figure out how many copies of the 16S rRNA gene can be expected per genome at each taxonomic group in any taxonomic level. Even if you're only watching this video to learn more about R and don't have a clue what a 16S RNA gene is or what taxonomy is, I'm sure you'll get a lot out of today's episode. Please take the time to follow along on your own computer. If you haven't been following along but would like to, welcome. Please be sure to check out the blog post that accompanies this video where you'll find instructions on catching up, reference notes, and links to supplemental material. The link to the blog post for today's episode is below in the notes. So I've already filed an issue uh, for today's episode, issue number 28. And what I'm going to do is we want to look at trends in the RRN copy number a copy across taxonomic ranks. And so I'd like to have on the x-axis the taxonomic rank and on the y-axis the average number of copies in that taxon. And so because many of our species have a lot of genomes, but many of our other species only have maybe one genome sequence, what I'd like to get first before we look at higher taxonomic ranks is an average for the species. So you'll recall that E. coli has something like, I think, 800 genomes in the database. And so that's going to really um, kind of swamp out the signal from other groups. So if we get one number from each species, we can then look at the averages for those higher taxonomic levels. And that, again, will allow us to control for uneven sampling of those different species. So again, this is issue 28, and I'll come over to my terminal, and uh, you'll see that I already um, created a template for today's episode to make an R Markdown document in our exploratory folder. Let me go ahead and create an issue, git branch, issue 28, git checkout, issue 28, and we're good. I'll go ahead and open up our studio by opening my rproj file. And if I look in my exploratory directory, you'll see that for today's episode, I've got this template already created, quantifying the number of RN operons across taxonomic ranks. Uh, I think I should fix my date. Uh, what did I say? It was 10.5. And again, I have my editor set up to output the chunks to the console. Uh, you might prefer to have it embedded directly in the document. For whatever reason, my quirk of how I've worked with this in the past, I really like it going to the console. Um, and then I also have the output set up so that uh, when we render the document finally, it'll be it'll look decent or good <laughs> on GitHub. 
okay? So what I've also copied in is the code chunk from the previous episode. What I like to do in these exploratory analyses is kind of like build up a, a bunch of different analyses and then figure out what works, what doesn't, what's gonna go in the story, what's gonna get cut out. And as we do this, we'll find that there's chunks of code that get kind of copied between different our markdown documents or different iterations of our analysis. And in the end, when we try to pull everything together, then I clean up that code and make it dry so that we don't have repeated code across our project. Recall dry stands for don't repeat yourself. We only want code represented once and then we wanna call it in different places, maybe using functions or by creating files that we can then use as input, okay? So again, this was what we had before. I'm gonna start by commenting out um, this part uh, from end of line 21 here before the pipe, line 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. What these lines did was they took our wide data frame and made them tidy. Um, but before I do that, I want to get an average for each species. So I'm going to get the average for each species, and then I'm going to make it tidy. Okay, so we'll go ahead and run uh, these different steps. Ah, and I have to run my libraries, and then it will know what the pipe is. And then ASV, metadata ASV, and if I come down and... We get our data frame that we know and love, where we've got a genome ID, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, strain, the region, uh, the ASV name, and the count. And the count is the number of time each ASV shows up in each genome. So we'll have to do two things first. So we will need to um, get the total number of copies per genome. Uh, we'll need to focus in on the V19 region, those two things, and then we'll also come back and get the average for the species. All right. So metadata ASV, we'll pipe that to filter to remove the V19 region, or to get the V19 region, rather. So this will get rid of all the other regions. And if you're, if you're paranoid that that didn't work, you could always add a count region. Ah. And we see that everything is from V19, so we're good. Okay, next we need to get the count on the total number of copies per uh, genome. So what we could do, or might be tempted to do, would be kind of group by, um, and this was genome ID, and then summarize, and do say NRNs equals sum of count, if we do that, though, one thing that you'll notice is that the summarize function creates a new data frame, in this case with two columns. One column will be the group by, group by variable, and the second column will be the summarize column. But if we do this, then we lose all of our taxonomic information, right? We could always do an inner join back to metadata ASV, but that just seems kind of silly. What we will do instead is we will do, we will add our different taxonomic levels. So we'll do kingdom, class, or so kingdom phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. I'm going to leave out the strain because I really just want one representative per species, and this should get us where we want to be. And now you'll see the difference in output is that, again, we have all of our grouping columns as well as our summary column. Um, and what you'll notice, of course, is that it also got rid of a few other things, right? It got rid of the strain, and it also got rid of the ASV column. So good. So this looks great. Um, and what I now want to do is I want to group by um, the species, right? I want to get a summary for each species. And so it's already grouped by that, I see. And so I can go ahead and do summarize, and I'll do mean RNs equals mean n rns running that i now see that i've got a species and the mean number of rns for each of those uh, maybe what i'll do is i will do a um, filter on species escherichia coli to make sure everything looks right then we get 7.01 copies so there's perhaps one or two genomes in the database where there's maybe eight copies, who knows? Um, 
So that, but that looks good, right? That's the kind of output we want. We want one line, one row per species. And at this point, we see that the output is grouped by kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, which is great. And what I would normally do would be to say, let's do ungroup. And so if we run the ungroup function, then we no longer have any grouping variables for our data. But now what I'd like to do is make the data tidy. And so I'll do pivot longer. And I will use minus mean RRNs. So I'm going to pivot everything except for that mean RRNs column. Names of the columns will go to uh, um, rank. And the values in those columns will go to taxon. Let's see, argument for matches, matches blah, 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 values too, sorry. So now we get three columns, mean RRNs, rank, and taxon, but I also have some NA values in there. So as we saw up above, I should probably just copy this down and paste this down, right? So I'm going to also bring down that mutate with the rank, and I'll get rid of all this other stuff. Paste that in. Um, and we will use our drop and a as well as our mutate. All right. And so if we run that, we got rid of our NA rows and we now have mean RNs, rank and taxon. Okay. Great. So this is already pretty quickly turning into quite the pipeline. I now want to group by my rank, right? Uh, no, I want to group by my taxon. Um, and so, of course, we will notice that the output of this has no grouping variable, right? So we'll go ahead and do group by uh, taxon, uh, rank and taxon, actually, because if I just did taxon, we would lose that rank information, right? So we're going to do rank taxon, and we'll pipe that to summarize. And then we will do mean RNs equals the mean of the mean RNs column, column, right? And so now what we see is that we've got a column for the rank, the taxon, and the mean RNs, and that we've got seven different ranks here, right? So we're in good shape. Um, and we see that like the average for bacteria is like 4.33, for archaea is 1.61. Before I did this, uh, without correcting for numerous copies of different species, and the bacterial average was actually like 5.06 or so, I want to say. So that's no doubt due to the overabundance of things like Salmonella and Escherichia coli that tend to have like seven or so copies. So again, this is a number that we can think of as being corrected for overrepresentation of each species. So, so this is good, right? This is the data that we can then plot. And I will then call this data frame um, taxon. RRNs, maybe I'll do rank taxon RRNs. But a few things happen in here that I want to point out. That as we ran this pipeline, uh, this is how I would create the pipeline uh, up to about, say, five months ago, right? But in the last few months over the summer, uh, the developers of dplyr put out a new release of dplyr, and dplyr is where we get these group by and summarize functions. Uh, that they, you'll notice that when we run a line, a couple lines like this, where we're getting the total number of RRNs per genome, the output at the top of this data frame tells us summarize regrouping output by kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Right, so it's telling us how it, how it um, is ungrouping or regrouping the data. I think of the group by function as basically making my data like an onion, right? With different layers. So in this case, we've got uh, how many? Four, five, six, seven, eight different layers, right? Um, of our onion. And then we ran that summarize and it peeled off the genome ID layer, right? So that layer now is gone. And our output, as we can see, is kingdom through species, right? Genome ID is gone. Um, we now, we then got the mean and if we, if we add that line to the pipeline, we now see that it tells us that it, output, it regrouped the output 
without the species, right? So it removed that species layer of the onion. And we, of course, then see that the output is here, right? So this is the default behavior. This is what uh, group by did prior to um, the release of 1.0. But it tells us that we can use the groups argument of, um, of group by, of summarize rather, right? And so we can be explicit about what we want to group our data by. And so for example, uh, this default behavior we get by setting, using the value uh, drop underscore last to the group's uh, argument. And so we run that. We no longer get that message because we told it explicitly what we wanted to drop the last, to drop the genome ID, right? So we could do the same thing um, here as well on this next argument, right? And so, of course, we run both of those and we no longer get the output message about how it was regrouping because we told it how we wanted it to regroup. Um, but when, uh, um, so, so this actually makes me notice that uh, I forgot that I had this ungroup um, function. And so the ungroup function following summarize is actually the same as using drop. Right? So if I use drop, then I get rid of all grouping information. And so you'll see in the output of the tibble, there's no grouping data there. And I really like to be able to ungroup my data uh, because when I get into things like pivot longer or some of these other functions, I tend to see just weird things happen. And really this gets to a um, the important point for today's episode is that I like to be really explicit in how I am grouping uh, my data, and I like to be explicit in what I'm doing in my code just in general, right? So if you knew R and you knew what was going on with the summarize function, you would know that this first summarize is doing it on this full list of things I was grouping by. You would then know that the second summarize did everything from kingdom through species, right? But if you weren't so familiar with R, or if there was a lot of other stuff going on in here, perhaps between lines 20, 39, or 38, 39, and 40, uh, it might get a little bit confusing. And so at first, um, when I started using this new version of dplyr, it kind of annoyed me that it was giving this output um, because it was just, I don't know, I, I, don't like, I, don't, I don't like the warning messages or the notifications. I like, I like for um, the code to, to just be clean in its output, right? So as I've played with this in this and other projects, I've come to realize that I kind of actually like these different options. And if you look at the help page for summarize, you will see um, that there is actually, um, there is the groups argument and you'll see that life cycle experimental, which tells you that they're not totally sure this is what they wanna do. Well, I think, I kind of feel like maybe drop might be appropriate to be the default. Um, and I, I can imagine there are reasons not to make that the default, but I'm kind of feeling like that's a default that I might like to use. Um, because if I put drop there, that will force me to be explicit about what I'm grouping by, right? So I would be basically doing this, right? And that way, if you come to my code and you read my code, or if I come back to my code in a month, a month or three months and read my code, it'll be very clear what's going on, right? And perhaps the example that I have here was already clear, but imagine if you have a more complicated pipeline where you've got other steps intermixed um, and those three lines were split up, uh, it might not be so easy to track what's going on, right? So again, we can run all this and we get the same result. Uh, we see that we have um, one complaint down here. Uh, that's because we had to summarize on this step. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do groups equals drop, and it'll get rid of that. Okay. And so then if, again, if I look at my data frame, which I called rank taxon RRNs, um, I see the values that I had had before, which is great. Um, there's a couple other arguments to be aware of with um, with summarize, or not arguments, but values to groups. So we talked about drop last, which again is like peeling off that outer layer of the onion, drop, which just takes off all the layers. Um, and then you can also do keep last, 
or just keep rather. And if I look at uh, running these four lines of code, what I will see is that I still have everything grouped, uh, including all those layers grouped, including the genome ID. So basically each row of this data frame becomes its own group, okay? So that's another option. Um, I'm not totally sure where I would use that, but it's good to know it's there. And then similar to this is row wise, which I don't know that I've ever used before. And so now I'm gonna start looking for places to use row wise, but um, group by, we can think of as grouping on columns and summarize allows us to do operations on those grouped columns. Row wise, um, basically treats each row as its own group. And that then allows you to do operations on individual rows. Again, I've never used this before that I'm familiar with. Uh, there is a row wise function, just like there's a group by function. Um, I don't know that I've ever used it. So I'm probably now gonna start looking for opportunities to use it and, and learning more about it. Um, but again, those are the four options that we have. We have drop last, which is the default. We have uh, drop, which gets rid of all the layers. We have keep, which keeps the full group by um, listing. And we have row wise, which then treats each row uh, in the output as its own uh, grouping variable. And again, I'm gonna use drop uh, because I like the fact that it's gonna force me to state what I'm grouping by. Um, and, and again, I typically in a case like this last one, um, or even at this last one, right, this last uh, where I'm going to end up having things grouped by rank in the end, I would always follow this with an ungroup function anyway. So putting in the dot groups equals drop to me is kind of a nice convenience. And again, makes my code a bit more clear. So if you think this is all much ado about nothing, um, know that there is another option to all this, right? You could do dplyr um, summarize info equals false. I think that's the argument. Uh, yeah, uh, summarize and form, sorry. And you can set that to false. And if I remove this dot group, groups function uh, argument, and run all that, ah, maybe summarize does need an S. So usually they're very good about um, using both spellings. Dplyr, summarize, inform. Yeah, for some reason it's still telling me what it's doing, um, even though I have dplyr, summarize, inform set to false. So um, I, don't, I don't know what's going on there, but again, I generally like don't like to turn off warning messages because I think the warnings should mean something, right? And if there is a problem, then I want to know about it. So I'll go ahead and add back in my groups equals drop. Rerun that. We're good. And again, if we look at rank taxon RRNs, we get our three column data frame, the rank, the taxon, and the mean RRNs. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do um, rank um, tax on RNs. I'm going to pipe that to ggplot AES X equals rank uh, Y equals taxon, or not Y equals taxon, but mean RNs. Um, you'll see that rank is a factor, and we put that code in up here, right, to put things in the same order that we had desired. Um, I have strain in there still, but it doesn't care. Um, so then we can do geome jitter and let's give this a run, see how it looks. And we see, um, yeah, <laughs> we see a mess, <laughs> but this is, this is what we're going for. I'm gonna go ahead and put in width equals 0 0.3, maybe make that cloud a little bit tighter so it doesn't bleed over. Maybe I'll also do alpha equals 0 0.3. Uh, what alpha 0.3 does is it makes the points transparent so that they, if they then overlap on top of each other, they get darker. Uh, it kind of blends in with the background a little bit. Uh, so I'm a, and I'm a fan of theme classic. And that cleans it up a little bit. 
because I can't help myself, I'm going to play with the labels a little bit. So labs x, I'm going to make null. Uh, because in cases like this, where I've got categorical variables on the x-axis, I think it's obvious what my variable on the x-axis is. So null then will remove that line that contains rank. And y, I'll make uh, mean number of RRN copies per genome. And then title, I will say is what? Um, there is, gotta be in quotes, uh, there is wide variation at the species level in the number of RRN copies. And maybe I'll put a line break in halfway here. And I'll go ahead and put in a subtitle, which will be um, each point represents um, a single taxon within that rank. Um, one, uh, I'll say numbers based on an average species uh, copy number. And kind of guess about where to put line breaks in here. So I'll save that. I think that's good. Uh, my deep thoughts um, will be what? So uh, bacteria have more copies than archaea. Even after correcting for number of genomes per species, there's wide variation in the number of um, RRN operons per taxonomic group. Okay, so that's good. We'll save that. I'll go ahead and knit it. Make sure everything works well here. Uh, this outputs what it will roughly look like on um, GitHub. Um, I'm going to clean up this tab a little bit. Uh, see what's going on with this. And re knit and see if that improves what's going on there. Um, not really. <laughs> All right. So that's good enough. Uh, we accomplished our goal for today's episode. Let me go ahead and commit these changes. So I'll git add exploratory uh, 2020 10 05. Put star to get all those files. Git commit. Um, construct strip chart of um, RRN copies per taxonomic group and level. Closes number 28. Close quote. We're good. Git checkout master, git merge issue 28. Oh. And our studio is freaking out in the background because I closed stuff. Should I close this? Yes. And we're good to push. And that's all going. And this is closed. And again, we can go to our exploratory directory now and see that we have a good number of reports in here. Um, don't know what's going on with the tabs. That's kind of annoying. Um, but we see that our plot looks pretty good. Maybe we didn't need all those line breaks. Um, kind of played with our title here. But um, again, we can see the average number of RRN copies per taxonomic group when we control for even sampling of the species. So, wonderful. Um, what we'll do in the next episode is perhaps draw a line across this to show the average uh, for that rank. Uh, and so one of the really powerful things about ggplot is the ability to uh, think in terms of layers and put a plot on top of a plot on top of a plot. Um, and so you can make some really nice effects that way. So there's a lot we're going to play with um, on the analysis we're working with using what I'll call exact sequence applicant, exact sequence variants. 
where we're taking the data exactly as it is represented in uh, the genome uh, without accounting for any kind of error in the sequences. Um, eventually, we will come back and we'll entertain some noise. Uh, and then we'll talk about, say, Amplicon sequence variants, where maybe we allow for a couple base um, uh, variation to fold sequences together into the same Amplicon sequence variant. So I hope you found this an interesting discussion of the dot groups argument. Um, it's always a little bit jarring when there's a new argument uh, to our functions that we know and love. Um, I, I couldn't find a lot of description online for why this decision was made, but hey, um, you know, if you have any thoughts about the dot groups argument, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. I'd love to hear um, what you're going to do with this dot groups argument and how it's going to change your workflow and the type of work that you're doing. So, um, and also, if you can get that um, dplyr summarize and form thing to work, let me know. See what I did wrong. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, keep practicing, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.